I made a foot switch panel with 12 switches on it that I need to monitor, and I'm going to use this PCB with today's sponsor, PCBWay. This board can actually monitor up to 16 switches, and I'm using this ribbon cable style connector, so I can plug in a more secure ribbon cable, or I can put individual DuPont connections on these pins. This uses 5 volt logic, so the inputs are all pulled high, and when a ground is received, it triggers a button press, and a sketch running in an AT Tiny can be set up to generate a serial output when a button is pressed, which goes out over an RS-485 connection. This allows having a bunch of control inputs in an electrically noisy environment where these switches need to control some other project or even just have a computer respond to them. Maybe wireless is not a good option in some environments. On all 16 inputs, I have an optional RC filter here in case it's a very noisy environment and there might be all kinds of spikes and glitches. It's one thing to software debounce but this can also potentially keep some harmful extra voltage spikes out of the system in the first place. So up to 16 buttons can be connected along with a ground so that when the button is pressed it brings this input to ground, goes through these RC filters, and it goes to a 16 channel GPIO expander, a PCF8575 that has an I2C bus going to an AT Tiny chip. So this chip can either continually pull over I2C waiting for a button change, or an interrupt can be read so the AT Tiny doesn't have to continually check for button presses. It can just wait until it's alerted and then go figure out which button was pressed. And once there is a valid button press detected, using the regular serial port, a command or something else can be sent out over RS-485 to a computer or another circuit or whatever needs to be interfaced with. And if this controller is at one extreme end of the overall RS-485 bus, a 120-ohm termination jumper should be installed. The AT-Tiny is programmed with the UPDI header here. I've used an Arduino Uno as a UPDI programmer in this experiment. Although I can use this generic interface for a lot of different things, my initial use case is going to be for a guitar effect loop switcher project. So I'm going to have a panel of 12 switches down here. There's going to be another PCB that this RS-485 output is going to control. And on that PCB, it's an audio switching matrix. So I can plug in a bunch of audio inputs, including a guitar, and a bunch of audio effects going into it. Then coming back out of this audio matrix, there will be one channel going out to an amplifier and a bunch of other outputs going to these same effects. What that means is I press one of the switches, then over RS-485 it'll tell the other board, I want this guitar to connect to the input of any given effect. I want the output of that effect to connect to maybe another effect and so on and eventually then go out to an amplifier. Then I can press another switch, and maybe then it just goes straight from a guitar in, directly to an amplifier out, and so on. So this is part one of a two PCB project. Looking through the demo sketch, I've listed any libraries I had to use for various things, including a button debouncer I'm using. And I'm using the ATtiny 1604 chip, so I need to make sure I have this board file support installed. And this RS-485 chip is only intended to either transmit or receive half duplex. So we need to set a control for any given moment to say, are we transmitting out right now or receiving in right now on our regular UART. So this GPIO here can be set high to enable us to transmit out over RS-485, or the same pin can be set low to enable the receiver, and we can listen in for any serial data. And that's automatically controlled with this Auto 485 library. We tell it our driver and receiver enable pin, and then whenever we would normally do anything with the serial port in a sketch, we just reference this RS-485 object instead, and everything runs as normal. So each of the 16 GPIO inputs go to a button debounce library, 
and when each pin has been debounced and a button is pressed or released, it will call this button handler function, and in the button handler, we will know which of the 16 inputs was just debounced, and we'll know if it was just pressed or just released. So when anything has occurred, I go in and see if something was just pressed, and then I determine which of the 16 buttons were pressed, and I'll send out a certain single character over RS-485. I didn't want to create a robust protocol looking for start and stop characters. I just wanted a single character for testing. So six of my 12 switches are going to be 0 through 5, and the next six are going to be A through F. And then just in case the other four unused ones are ever asserted, I'm just sending out debug info so I can still detect that, but I'm not using those really. So I press one of my 12 switches, a single character is sent out, and my next project can use that. In my setup, all I'm doing is setting all 16 GPIO as inputs with a pull-up resistor, so I'm looking for a switch going to ground. And I'm not using interrupts to detect the switches because the sketch doesn't have anything else to do anyway, so I'm just manually polling all the buttons repeatedly to see has anything been pressed. These 12 foot switches are connected up to the GPIO and I have them set in the sketch so that these will be labeled 0 through 5 and then A through F being the characters that will get sent out over RS-485 when pressed. So then the receiving side can tell with a single character which switch was pressed. So just testing them sequentially, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C, D, E, F. And just to test, I'll just pick C. If I hold it down, it only has one key press. If I let it go, there's nothing registered. If I go to B and I just tap it lightly, it has to be a real press. So the debouncing seems okay, and if I press multiple, like all four here, it should be 0, 1, A, B. If I just press them all simultaneously, we got A, B, 1, 0. So it detected them all properly. If I go with B and 5, those were detected. So I think this is going to do what I want. Now I just need to get the next PCB working so I can actually use this switch controller to manipulate this guitar audio signal chain.